lemon poppy seed waffle cake. Or cake waffle. Keep breaking these things because they're in the path now. But my um, inspiration for making this waffle today was my hot lemon and honey that I made. So I took um, I took two extra lemons, like I've used lemon for my hot lemon and honey, but I used two lemons for the waffle. So each one of us is having a lemon in the waffle because we're having both lemon juice and the zest in the waffle. And, um, I didn't put that much honey. Maybe three tablespoons for the both of the waffles. Um, and I dissolved that in a little bit of water, hot water. And um, I wasn't sure if it would be good because it was smelling good and then I thought, should I add vanilla extract as well? I don't know if I should have. But it tastes good anyway. But I think maybe without it would have been good too. It does taste cake-like. I think you could eat it without uh, the topping. <coughs> I kind of inhaled that one. And enjoy it too. <coughs> Yeah, it's a good one. This one's definitely a recipe I want to do again. So, um, with the cake waffles, it's really optional whether you want to use egg or not. You can use sand then gum powder. It'd be nice and coffee. But, in this case, I used, um, like it's oat flour that I used for this, but I also used two eggs for our two waffles. This batch only made two. Because I wanted the yellow color from the yolk to add to, the, you know, so it's more lemon-like, right? Um, so I'm eating some yolk today. that once in a while. I don't think it's going to kill me. We'll find out. So, um, no measurements. I can't measure. So I can't really tell you. I could, I could make up some numbers. Like I usually put in, I think it's about a teaspoon of baking soda in every one of my waffle recipes. And, um, I really should know, because, I mean, it's always going to be basically the same amount per waffle, right? How much waffle, how much uh, oat flour I use and stuff like that, but I, I just put it in. I just, I guess because I've seen it in the bowl so many times that I know what it looks like in the bowl, and that's enough for me for a measurement. notch. Wow. Yeah. With these last, um, with these, um, cake and cookie waffle recipes, anyone would love them. Anyone. And this one has honey to sweeten it, but like I said, not very much. And James isn't that worried about honey when it comes to sweeteners. Not like sugar. When it comes to dancing. Mm -hmm. That having been said, 
He tries to it's avoid It's fairly it. rare for me to eat it. Every so occasional. <laughs> we'll get a container. Mm-hmm. And it goes pretty fast. Mm-hmm. I got a sweet tooth. Yeah, but I also, I, I drink it in my lemon and honey. <laughs> so, the best thing to do is to just put it in the pantry and keep it out of the mm-hmm. side. I wouldn't even know if you have honey in the house. No, you know. You see, there you go. And uh, it's not as though I have a craving for it. You know. like Pauline probably feels fairly safe about telling me the honey's in the house. Yeah, well, it's on the table right now because I didn't know. Oh, if that's the... what it is. It's been sitting right next to my. Yeah. Because I didn't know if you think that. This was enough sweet. Yeah, this. Yeah, I saw that the other day, yesterday. I opened it up and went, "What is this?" I didn't move around. It looked like beer or something like that. To me. It's wine in the other container. <laughs> I didn't. Oh. I was putting my wine in the containers, and I had a little bit extra, and I'm like, "What am I going to do with this?" Wine, alcohol. Yeah. Uh, I'm not like a typical guy, a very typical guy. Like uh, a lot of guys that just drink the beer down. Mm -hmm. I can't stand beer. I can't stand alcohol Mm -hmm. of any sort. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have drunk. And I don't like the feeling either. Up inebriation or whatever. I have drunk enough to get drunk. That was maybe only once in my life. It didn't bother me. I wasn't puking or something like that. I used to be drunk oh. most evenings. Huh. Especially well, in my you, teenage years. You, you drink some wine, maybe, whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, the one time it was five beers in five hours. Probably five hours. A lot. Me too. Well, for somebody who doesn't drink, mm, I I'm guess. surprised you weren't passed out. What do you mean? It was at a. Uh, it was at a, a bar or something like that. Mm. It's not my nature to be rowdy. No. Mm. I was just drinking with uh, at the rate everyone else was, but I guess you you got a point because mm-hmm. it wasn't the first time I'd drunk beer, but it was you know like it would have been maybe months before then that I'd had previous beers. I was probably like totally not inured to it. So. Mm-hmm. That had never occurred to me. I mean, to me, it felt like maybe I was tipsy or something like that. Not even that. I just didn't like the the feeling. See, like five beers. That would be like five beers for you, right? It would be different for me. It would be a bit bigger. Guys. I've asked. Uh, guys that and they say, oh, you know, it's enough to make you drunk, but not wild and crazy. And also, you were not, you you had, you were thin back then. Yeah, I'd be about 137 pounds. Anyway, when you're making cake waffles and stuff like that, cake waffles are going to be more complicated to make than the cookie waffles. So I have showed you um, easy waffle to harder waffle. And this is a harder waffle because you you have to learn along the way, you have to learn how much liquid you're putting in for how much dry. And with this one, you have a bunch of different liquids you're putting in. You're not just putting in the water, like the there's some ash floating around in the air. Ash. 
I guess it's, well, it is. It's Rocky Mountain ash, I think. It's kind of sad. The little ghosts of trees moving along with us. Um, That's amazing. It's the first time we've noticed that this year. Yeah. Well, I've noticed it on the table a couple times when I've set out. Okay, Sometimes yeah. Sometimes I've had to wash it off, but I haven't had it coming right down uh, with us. Yeah, anyway. it's almost like a snowflake. Yeah, well, yeah. We're not right next to the Rocky Mountains for people who aren't familiar with the geography of Alberta who really cares mm -hmm. about Lethbridge terribly much. Except for the drug Sorry. dealers. They love it here. Also, the drug users. Mm -hmm. They uh, a lot gravitated here. And they didn't leave. From a variety of different places, and I'm afraid not all of them left from the supervised over consumption site, SOS, was shut down. Mm. For lack of funding. Yeah. You can't keep um, paying the head honchos <laughs> exorbitant rates and. Two hundred and twenty-five thousand, anyway. according to several accounts. Yeah. The, the I presume the, the head honcho. I mean, they were probably making more money than a lot of the drug dealers that they were working for. Anyway. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, when you're making the waffle, you you want to try to eyeball your liquid ingredients in your dry. So, what you can do, you need to cool down the hot water and honey. So you can pour the lemon juice right in that, like you're making. And uh, that'll cool it down fairly quickly so you can add it to the eggs. But what I do is I put the um, I put the eggs in the bowl with the oat flour and then add the honey water with the lemon slowly and you get a really nice fluffy that'll fluff right up it, it's almost like you're making a because the lemon with the if you make a lemon meringue pie which you can make a lemon meringue, meringue waffle and I will show you something but when you're making a meringue, uh, usually you're putting some lemon juice in there and some cream of tartare and, uh, and the eggs, the egg whites. And when you add the, the sugar to the egg whites and you're whipping, it fluffs up, right? And the cream of tartare is going to hold it there. Um, but you'll get the same sort of fluff with um, when you're adding the honey, lemon, water to the uh, the batter with the egg white with the egg in it. So I like to put the eggs in the bowl with the oat flour and the lemon zest and the poppy seeds and add this and whip it in slowly and you get it fluffs up. It's lovely. And then I mean you're gonna get a fluff in your cake. Yeah, you could really smell the smoke in the air last night. So Do you need more strawberries? I don't. I could use some. Because I don't think good? I'm using very many of mine. Yeah, it's very cake like. Mm -hmm. I like the taste pretty good, but maybe not as much as you do. Well, you don't like lemons. I'm not a big fan, but when you put some honey on it, it's... it's uh, I love lemons. I don't like the other citrus fruit that much. The lemons that we've got here are very bitter. We actually... Sour. On, uh, uh, the kind of land that we lived on in Africa when we were there the second time in the family. That was between 1962 and 1964. Mm -hmm. 
I guess you'd have to kind of call it like a farm. It's a rural setting. Then we grew corn, or as we called it, maize. Or as it was called there. We had cattle and things like that. Turkeys, lots and lots of chicken. So on and so forth. I don't know how many fields my dad was responsible for. Maybe not many. He was a teacher at a mission school. But we had like a, a small grove of bananas. We had some guava trees. We had one little peach tree that never really did terribly well. And uh, we had some what they call papas. I presume those are papayas. We call them papas. I think that's uh, the American from the south, you know, from the southeastern United States designation for it. Anyway, we had, a, I think, a fair number of those. But what we had out, maybe what we had most of, were lemon trees. And I do not have a uh, bitter tooth. I have a sweet tooth. But I don't like bitter. Or sour. Sour, I know. And was especially acute when I was a kid. Or I guess a sitting is the way to put it. So when I was a kid in Africa the first time, up till age five, my mom found out the only way she could get me to eat tomatoes, I loved the taste of tomatoes, but I couldn't handle the acidity. So she'd put a it's a, not a sprinkle, but a layer of sh sugar on top of a half of tomato. And that way, I, I eat it quite happily. But the second time we were there, I was between the ages of 8 and 10. And when it was lemon picking season, we kids would go out and pick lemons and eat them. They were peelable. It's amazing. I've never seen lemons like it. They were large. They weren't quite as big as a typical orange, but they were much larger than a mandarin. They were pretty close to a typical orange. They might have been almost the same size now, I think. And you could just eat them like one would eat an orange. They weren't definitely weren't as sweet as an orange. They weren't like the lemons you get here. So there are some things I miss about Africa. Well, the lemons we get here, I think, are all from South Africa. So we were kind of in Central Africa. They'd just be a different variety. A very different variety. When I say, I, I don't mean to suggest they're grown here. It's just people have a certain taste for them. You know? It's a culture, I guess. Well, they probably ship better. Mm. Well, that's so often nowadays is the, the prime concern when it comes to yeah. food products. And so, well, I mean, nowadays you can have refrigerated whatever, but it probably is that, I mean, they would ship better by boat or whatever a long time ago, and then people just got used to it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. 
So yeah, I didn't. There were lots of things. There are some things I miss about Africa. Mm. Oh, oh, I don't miss it. You may have it's noticed. It's silly her. to pretend that Europeans. And I have a little bit of African American ancestry. But it's silly to pretend that uh, people who are European are made to live in that kind of climate. And perhaps it's say. silly to pretend that uh, people from the tropics are made to live in this kind of climate. It'll be a, like a spring day, and you'll see people from the tropics still. They're shivering. Find it. Unpleasantly cold. Wow, what's going on? I'm just going to mention our laundry. Just getting UV sterilized behind us. Yeah, yeah. So you did some laundry. It was heavy it's duty. It wasn't much of it, I guess I recall. Mm -hmm. And I did, I guess all told, I did two. Um, I guess you call it loads of laundry. Mm. So I did a fair amount. Ran out of uh, easily accessible. Space to hang the <laughs> laundry, so I hang, hung, uh, pretty well. All yeah, all the socks I did on the lilac bush bushes, several. I think I put them all on. Well, no, two different bushes. Anyway, my back kind of handled it okay better than last time I mean, thanks for putting the container up on the table there because mm -hmm. I could kind of rest my arms on the uh, no we've been doing our laundry by hand because um, well we have a washing machine at James's house but his plumbing is not in order right now mm -hmm. and my washing machine needs some work and I, I think it might need to get trash. It's hard to say. No. And it doesn't. doesn't. Okay. I don't know. Anyway. It just needs a part. Oh, is that true? I thought it was fit for the pit. Well, in our society, things usually are. But People treat everything as disposable. If well, it's we not tend, we tend working, not to do that not way. Anymore, you don't repair it. Mm -hmm. You just replace it. How, where did you find that? Was it a, something that someone had left on the boulevard? Uh, what? No, I bought it. Okay. There we go. I, I, I heard it. You bought it second hand. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. It was second hand. And it worked for years. And now it needs a part. And I don't feel like doing it. So, well, we're doing laundry by hand. And, um, and it made me realize that it's better to do it by hand. I would way rather have, um, if somebody out there has one of those old ringers uh, in their... Um, probably out on, on their farm, like in their, an old chicken coop or something that they're like, maybe I'll use this again, and they haven't, and they don't ever want to use it again. I would like that. I don't know how I'm going to find one of those old bringers. My mom used to use on the laundry when I was a kid. Her and her friend would do laundry together. And they were doing it by hand, and yeah, they're really all you need is the ringer, I think. Because it's better to have the clothes UV sterilized. If you're using a um, washer and dryer, well, 
Yeah, it's it's less labor or whatever. You can put the stuff in and your time can be spent doing something else and that's nice. But um, also in in times when you're worried about hygiene, more like pandemic times, I think maybe I should be UV sterilizing my clothes rather than putting them in a dryer and wasting energy for nothing. I mean, here in southern Alberta, it's not like it's humid. There's very few rain days this summer. Like what, maybe two? probably didn't sleep much better than I did last night. I slept. It's a great waffle though. 